Theria on behalf of for Nasimonji College, Ville Parle, and Mithibai College, Ville Parle. I welcome uh, today's uh, very much distinguished and wonderful speaker, Nikita Deria. She is live from USA. Here we are having a evening good time, India time, 7 o'clock. But for her, it's early morning, I suppose, in Michigan, Madam, right? And yeah. she's going yeah. to uh, throw a different light on higher education. Higher education and research opportunity, especially in Germany and European country. Well, Germany and Europe, European country are very much, uh, you know, sort of a leader in education field. And for us, for India, it's a highly cost effective. Of course, we do have a choice of going to USA, UK, Australia and other nations. But when we compare cost versus benefit, then probably German, Germany and other few countries of Europe will certainly march ahead. And however, because their education system is a bit different, selection procedure is different, selection of the program requires expertise. We are lucky here to have Nikita Dedia, who is a principal consultant, founder director of Exponent Consultancy Services USA. She has extensively delivered lots of talk on this German education opportunity. She guides the student starting from visual building to end-to-end -end lending up to you know uh, german uh, germany and uh, i'm sure you are going to have a wonderful session with her and over to you madam yeah not taking more time you know i am also eager i i get every time i hear her i get something new from her please madam you can continue thank you very much uh Professor Dr. Vijay Satra, uh, you you are a phenomenal leader yourself, and it's it's a great thing that you're doing for for your students to bring informed choices. Um, Mitibai is absolutely an esteemed organization, uh, very well known in Mumbai, but also in Maharashtra, uh, throughout Maharashtra. It's, I have I'm. I'm very much a Bombay girl and I have loved also the food uh, that we get outside in Mitty Bai. Yeah. So, uh, Madam, before your actual lecture starts, uh, you can put off the presentation and put your video on so that people can see. see your, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, then when actual video start, uh, presentation start, it's okay. Sure. So now they will be able to see you. Yeah, 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 please. Madam is live from USA. <laughs> yeah, please. Sure, so hello everyone and uh, Mitibai is very close to my heart. I've loved the food and I'm a Bombay girl and um, um, the students, are, you are also very vibrant, very, very smart. So there is a great focus on grades, but there's also, you put great importance also on a lot of other things. And that's something really exciting. As smart students of um, Mitibai and the institutions of uh, Ville Parle, it's, it's very imperative in today's times to have uh, smarter choices, as smart as you are. And, and that's the reason we are doing this uh, wonderful webinar. So give me um, a second and I will start uh, the presentation. Unfortunately, MS Teams can only, uh, MS Teams only like either uh, <laughs> to share the presentation or to see the presenter. So we keep the highlight on the presentation right now. Uh, when I was in Mumbai, I was the head of uh, the DAD. DAD is the German uh, government agency for higher education and research. And it's one of the largest funding organizations worldwide. So it's equivalent to uh, Fulbright from the US. And DAD um, has uh, offices in 60 countries of the world. So that's, that's really large. With the DAD, while I was with the DAD, of course, I was responsible for the Western region of India, along with my colleague, the Consul General of the German Consulate in Mumbai and the head of the Chambers of Commerce, uh, in the German Chamber of Commerce and such. And under uh, on, on my position, I had the great benefit to meet and interact with decision makers of uh, German universities and also European counterparts. Um, of course, IIT and IIMs, they were very close links. Um, and I've also been an intercultural personality. I've been an Indian ambassador to the Netherlands. It's very interesting. And with all of this experience, I think I feel um, 
you know, I feel um, I'm able to present the information in its rightful and justful manner. Some of the prime reasons why do we consider Germany? And this is this is a very common question that I get asked, ma'am, you are in America. Why are you talking about Germany? Well, yes, here I'm in America. I'm also I have been very closely associated uh, to also another organization for which I was the regional director for four years. Uh, we, we used to have a lot of host family programs for the Indian students who come here. Um, this was a voluntary position, but I got a chance to meet uh, with a lot of uh, Indian students who are coming here. On an average, the students who come here, irrespective of what you're studying, it's the cost is anywhere between 100,000 uh, to 150,000 US dollars to come to the US. Now, with the pandemic, whatever happened, do you think when students come back, they would get a 90 lakh or a crore rupee job? It's practically difficult. So some of the main reasons to consider Germany is its affordable education, why German institutions still retain their quality of education. Um, the taxpayers pay the money for the students uh, to be at these public universities, which are 100% scholarships, and even private universities or even private programs under public universities also are very largely funded. So if you see a course that's like 1500 euros, the actual cost for that course to be conducted would be about 50 to 60,000 uh, euros. Um, but they only charge about 1,500 euros, and that's something like a state policy for non-EU students. So even if you're, if you think you have seen a course which is asking for, so most of the courses are free. But even if you see that there is some cost asked, it's still a fraction of the otherwise cost of the course. So for you as a student, what you're looking at is affordable education, and the most important aspect is that there is a very wide variety of courses to choose from. I say this uh, because I've seen that there is a very close connection of the industry and the academia and uh, academia. So the state and the central government of Germany, they try to bring in uh, a, a consensus as to how many jobs are going to be available and accordingly spots are opened up at the university. So this is really, really good. The institutions are world class, very beautiful state of art um, buildings. And most of the buildings also get some or the other prize for the architecture or things like that. So it's it's nice to be there as well. It's networking with the world markets, whether you are in Dusseldorf or Berlin, whichever country you're connecting to people from 100 plus countries around the world. It's all the programs are in English mediums. The medium of instruction is English. And this is after the Bologna process that happened, uh, which is internationalization of higher education. So English is the medium of instruction. All um, most of the courses that you are looking for are in English, but it's always good to learn a little bit of German just to make your way through and make new friends. When you blend all of this, it's absolutely an experience of lifetime. The second important reason, very vital, is that Germany being in the heart of Europe, Germany also offers uh, not just German visa, but Schengen visa. So when you go to Germany, you are getting access to the total 28 countries of the EU. This is this is really nice. I mean, what? Where can you get this kind of benefit? Ke ek pe free <laughs> visas, you know. So this is this is a great benefit, uh, especially for students who are looking to work after you have finished your education, and you will get an opportunity to work anywhere in the EU, and that's that's absolutely a great advantage. Uh, smart students like you absolutely love to do uh, great inventions. Even, even over a cup of chai, we are discussing what a great idea somebody had about, um, um, about an app or something like that. So Germany absolutely fosters um, um, achievements and all the ambience in reference to higher education and research is geared towards it. 
There are more than 100 plus Nobel laureates that stem out from Germany. I once had a chance to also host a Nobel laureate um, committee meeting. Um, the, so it's very interesting how the kind of perspective they have towards gearing science. The third biggest pillar that we're looking at is uh, that it's an industrial giant. Most of you students are students of commerce, finance, management. Uh, commerce, finance, management, uh, some of you are from data science and HR. You know, these are the centrifugal fields that every company in the world needs. And this is just a small list of the companies that are hiring uh, international students in a large number. The little dot that you see your friends, it's actually a comma. So it's not a dot, but it just means that six and a half lakh of uh, employees for Volkswagen or four lakh plus employees for Bosch and so on and so forth. So what's what's interesting to know that there are a lot of jobs available. And during my presentation, I, I also like to give a comparative analysis with other countries so that you get an idea. You see this webinar, this the entire reason of having this webinar is that you have an informed choice. Today, uh, there are jobs being lost out of UK. Universities have opened up, but if jobs are lost out, how is that student really going to benefit? And there are some very alarming facts right now happening in UK uh, because of the Brexit and the things that are happening with Indian students. It's very devastating to see that. So if it was my brother or sister, I would not want them to be in such a place, but in a place that flourishes and allows other to flourish. Uh, what, now that we got so interested about studying in Germany, let's understand the facts and figures. In all, there are about 400 plus universities in Germany. This is a very, very large number. Um, considering a, for a Western country, because if you just look at Netherlands, all in all, it has seven universities. Uh, Germany is the neighboring country and it has 427. So it's a very large number. And there's a lot of funding available uh, through the central and the state government and through different um, channels for the exploration of different ideas, projects that you as a smart student would have. And there's also an excellence initiative that gives uh, that gives um, access to students to not just a lot of collaborations, but also a lot of uh, partnership opportunities to jump from Germany to other universities and other countries of the world. And I'm going to talk about that as well. However, the system in Germany, it's a little complicated, but I'm here to simplify that. The first kind of universities are the traditional universities. So these are 100 plus in number. All subjects you can uh, study here at traditional university. But what's interesting to know that these are very theoretical focused. So if you're looking at doing, um, you know, a if you have passion in the field of academia or if you have passion uh, to be going ahead for your PhD or any of those kinds, this is the right kind of university for you. Of course, these degrees are internationally recognized. And then the second kind are the universities of applied sciences for those kind of students who like to roll up their sleeves and work on the practical implementation of whatever you've studied in the classroom. So it can be for economics, uh, finance, commerce, e-commerce, anything. You get a large practical experience, which is inbuilt and part of the curriculum. So that's that's very, very vital to understand. How does the grading system look like? Um, it goes from one to four, one being the best and four being the just manage to scrape through. So you go from one, if you're at one, it definitely means you're above 90, 92 percentile or 9.2, 9.3 CGPA, and then it ranks down. So that's how the system looks like. And what, how do you understand which are the best universities? Everybody in the world is going to say, I'm the best. But how do you actually quantify and differentiate? Let us understand the factors. One of the very important factors is that they will say that 
hey, we are giving or we are providing so much to our students and the esteemed professors that they've gone ahead and had so many Nobel Prizes. For example, universities like TU Munich. So they have 13 Nobel Prizes to their credit. And this, this is a really big achievement. So you speak about your achievements. The second kind of university would say that's true, but we have association with 56 Nobel laureates that and it's very interesting friends to know that the Nobel laureates who go and win these kind of awards and prizes are based in the university itself. They are not uh, working on their projects in some dark corner and they're very accessible to the students. How wonderful would that be for uh, all of us to have an access to Nobel laureates, even if it is for economics or management, and then have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with them to understand how your choreograph looks like and so on. So th this is these are the parameters of good universities. And then the other kind of university would say, in addition to all the e-knowledge that we have, on cloud and everything, we have more than 65 black books. Or another university like Aachen uh, would say that I have uh, more than 150 programs. This is interesting to know that universities like RWTH Aachen, they are a public university, but they also run a lot of private courses. And um, I have started doing a lot of STEM series with stalwarts where you would uh, where uh, one such, uh, you know, stalwart has been interviewed and she mentions about how we are, although it's a public university, but they still have private courses running. Uh, and those are in conjunction with the best industries in and around that region. So that's interesting. The second aspect about uh, universities that offer so many programs is that even though you're enrolled for one program and you're paying the fees for that, let's say another elective interests you, you and it's within the same campus, you can go and sit for those lectures. And that's a great knowledge. Uh, that's, that's a great access for you all. And 150 programs is not a small number by any standards. That, that speaks of how many students and how many professors on the campus and the great opportunity you would have. What does the master's degree look like? It's 120 credit points, so 60 credit points each year. And I know at Medibai we all love to talk and express what we are good at. You would get this opportunity to not write your master thesis, but you can orally present your master thesis. And for that, entire 30 credit points is allocated for that. Doctoral programs are no longer dry and boring. It's made very, very interesting. The first path is the individual doctor program wherein you're registered under a PhD mentor who is based on his, his or her gender. They are actually your mom or dad, your doctor mother or doctor father, and they advise you. So this is the one on one. The second type is structured PhD programs, which is very, very exciting. Three or four budding researchers come together to work on such PhD doctoral programs, it's really fast track. So most of the times you finish it in six semesters flat, and you also get to earn while studying this PhD. So these are funded PhDs. And how much can you earn? So in Indian rupees, anywhere from 20 lakh up to 35 lakh of rupees per year. That's a very good amount uh, to be earning while you're doing your PhD. And the third way, and this information is not even available on the net, my friends. So the third way is that you've done your master's, you go ahead, do your job, but you've maintained good relations with your professor and the professor agrees to register that thesis as a PhD thesis. So you can do a doctoral program in the industry. Now, what are the fields that you can study? A wide variety from computer science to e-commerce to to photography, to wine business, to fashion design, you name it and there's an option available. Now what I've done, my friends, is I've, I've picked up some few fields that are an exact conjunction to the students that are part of 
today's webinar. Okay, so uh, we have a list of you which speaks about what field you're interested in. So I'm just giving a highlight of a selected bunch of fields. The first being computer science. Computer science is growing like anything and I would like to tell you that I also like to focus on the new age business. What's new age business? So the jobs that are going to come up in 2022 or 2023 henceforth, those are new age businesses. And in accordance to those are the jobs that are going to be opened up. HCI, human computer interaction, tops the chart. And believe it or not, the the field this particular um, field of computer science is growing to be a 65 billion dollar industry whether it's uh, quantum computing i know one of the students she's in quantum computing uh, from the list and such so it's it's interesting to know and these are over and above normal programs so all the normal programs will always be there the other kind could be computational uh, material science or informatics, IT, but in a different way, or computer science focusing on big data and artificial intelligence. I have made, uh, we also do something called as the ECS industry analysis, and artificial intelligence has been spoken about in that industry. What, what's the kind of industry size, the opportunities available, and how can you reach your pinnacle? The third, very important, is the commerce and the fields of economics. Students, I mean, believe me, economics and commerce is such a large field. Um, no company in the world is bereft, uh, which means uh, every company in the world needs an economist. Every company in the world needs a commerce person. And economics and commerce has such a wide variation like never before. You are a very smart person. You can go ahead and do international strategic management or have a blend of fields like economics and finance. It's very, very interesting to know that economics and e-commerce today is a $500 billion industry. I repeat, it's a $500 billion industry. That's huge. So why am I stressing on that? Because that speaks about the opportunities available in various industries. And what happens at these German universities is they actually create courses that are in demand by the industry. And so there are a lot of courses, if they are no longer in demand, they're shut down and they're dead and gone. So we do not talk about dinosaur, dinosaur age uh, programs, but we are talking about new age programs that are very much in relevance. This also means that if you see a program, this means there is a job available for you. There are cities like Frankfurt, which have more than 500 banks and they love having economics people, commerce people and things like that. 500 banks just in one city. Um, it's probably more, but 500 is a conservative number. So within that field, you can be studying consulting and business analytics or leadership in large international organizations like UN. Yeah, so th there's an MBA just in that. Or you can do an MBA in global management. Yeah, take the route of great leaders like uh, Indra Nui. Indra Nui has just come up with her book, Life in Full. And she speaks about how she went ahead to study business consulting and that the experience and that led her to the great uh, pivotal role that she had as uh, CEO and chairman of PepsiCo. So it's very interesting that if you take these routes and if these kind of fields interest you, there are wonderful programs available for you, like international economics and public policy. Public policy is always very, very interesting if you love debating, if you love understanding what, why, how of any business that's for you. And then, my friends, comes the field of finance. Finance is an even bigger field. Finance is a $1.5 trillion industry. Yes, my friends, $1.5 trillion industry because everything in the world needs finance. 
a Dani, if he's buying more than six airports, he needs financing. Or if it is a movie business, they need financing. Any kind of sustainable business, they need financing. So if you want to get into that field, and then you can further spe super specialize within that. You can do sustainable finance or financial economics. And there are such beautiful blends available in that field like green energy and climate finance. So you can go into uncharted territories and still be a pioneer in that. Wow, management options. Gone are the days when we had some nine, 10 options on management, not anymore. Uh, you look at Sundar Pichai. I mean, although he's uh, he's an engineer, but today his 99% of the time, as stated by him, goes in innovation and business creation. Being the president of uh, Alphabet that he is right now, he believes that innovation is charting, uh, you know, th th that's at the helm of any business. So if that interests you, go ahead and do that. And there are so many options within that of business and sustainability, entrepreneurship, marketing or optimization of resources. That's another very big field. And in one of the STEM series, um, there's one interview with a stalwart who is handling a multi-million dollar defense company uh, program, and he speaks of resource optimization. So it's very, very interesting. Or sales management. Very unique management programs in addition to all the other ones uh, that we see is MBA in healthcare management. I mean, healthcare is another field which is an $800 billion industry. Uh, supply chain, you can go ahead and do an MBA in supply chain. Everything in the world today needs supply chain, even COVID vaccine. So they need a good supply chain to, to make sure it reaches all the countries in South Africa and such. Or uh, fashion, which is inherent to all of us, you know. You can just study pure luxury, pure fashion and sales management or uh, marketing intelligence. Understand the intelligence behind how marketing works and digital marketing and CRM tools and stuff like that, like Salesforce, SAP and stuff. So anything and everything there is an MBA possible, even in wine business or just pure MBA and entrepreneurship or MBA in food business and consumer studies. Wide variety of options like MBA in developing and emerging markets. Today, we are talking about uh, very, very large economies like India, China, and these are all emerging markets. And they, they are over trillions of dollars of industry in any field, you name it. And everybody wants to enter these markets. So if you have, uh, you know, pioneered in this, no better person than you because you also speak the Indian languages by default. So they would love to hire you. Engineering management, if, if that's your passion to also manage engineering companies like innovation or digital management, then uh, these are the wonderful fields that you can get into. A food technology, um, uh, it's no more a taboo. Uh, you can get into fields like human nutrition and health sciences. There are so many mushroom companies that have opened up, not just in Mumbai, but in India that talk about nutrition and health sciences. And they say it is scientific, but there's no science backing to it. If you get the right degree into it, this is such a wonderful field. Um, and you can be a pioneer in that. Same as in for biotechnology uh, and pharmacy, because there are so many students also in today's uh, webinar who are from biotech. So you can have a blend of fields like pharmaceutical biotechnology or biomedical sciences and such, or pharmacoeconomics for that matter. There are various options in renewable energy, if that is something that interests you, or pure math. Every every company in the world follows um, algorithm. You know, today, if you have searched onto something uh, tomorrow in your social handle fields, uh, social handles, all of those advertisements will start popping up. Who is doing that? Um, it is it is algorithm. It's math. So there's mathematical physics or you can do actual and financial mathematics. Actual, actual field is just 3% tapped in today's market. There is 97% untapped. So you can get into that. 
physics, quantum physics, particle physics, astrophysics, physical biology, oh, wonderful fields, material sciences and simulation, biomedical engineering. You know, you want to get into new age business. So don't go for biomedical engineering. It, it can also be biomedical sciences. So it's something like this, you know, you want to fight obesity with a drug delivery patch, get into biomedical sciences or things like that or energy and environment, waste management. I know there are so many economic students and some of them have, were registered with us and now they are at German University. Uh, she she was also from Mitibai and working on various waste management and women hygiene products and, and, and things like that. So it's interesting that if you can spot opportunities, these are the fields you can get into. Some of the students in today's webinar are also from data science. And uh, just by studying data science is not helping. But if you study a blend of knowledge engineering or artificial intelligence and big data with data science or decision sciences, that's going to give you an edge, a step forward. Textiles, uh, which speaks about merged technologies or medicines, you know. Uh, so coming from the sciences uh, background, you can do life sciences. PhD, so all of these subjects that I showed you could have master's and PhD options as well. But if you're interested in pure PhD, also there are some very unique options. And what, what does the concept look like? So the first and foremost is decentralization in Germany. <clears throat> what is decentralization? It means that every university in Germany has been given the liberty to formulate its own rules and regulations for what they want for their prospective uh, students, which means they can say, hey, we are accepting 12 plus 3 for bachelor's degrees, and that's perfectly fine. So you do not, I repeat, you do not have to do the mandatory 16th year um, like um, as for other countries of the world. You are accepted, but also respected for what you've done, uh, because if your home university and if your home country accepts that, they will accept it. So that's that's a great big news for commerce economics students because you know, we all would have done 12 plus 3 and not 12 plus 4. So that's a great advantage. And in reference to tests, uh, most of your international mother tongue is English. You all speak absolutely fluent English. You need not be worried for exams like TOEFL and IELTS and you know burn your midnight oil for that. Uh, any of these exams, uh, so exams work in the way that A is basic, B is intermediate, and C is advanced. So TOEFL, IELTS, even if you get 100%, you are still at level C 1.1. That's the highest. However, in the last two months, we've devised a strategy by which even if the student doesn't give any of these exams, we bring him to the even topper level of C 2.2, which even if you by getting 100% in these exams, you cannot achieve. And um, that's very easily possible. So you do not have to break your head with all of this. But this we'll understand when we understand the greater details of your exact uh, resume and things. Um, GRE and GMAT is always not very mandatory. It really depends on the ingredients of your course. Uh, so it could be asked if it's quantitative in nature or could not be asked at all. So I think it's it's very, very student friendly and the living expenses still stay around 850 euros a month. That's absolutely on the upper end for a student. Uh, this is like an upper limit. Um, it, you can live within much less than this as well. What does a visa look like? So it, I know it can be a scare for many, many students. Uh, so if you're not an international threat, visa is not an issue. All you need to show is that you're able to support yourself when you are in Germany, uh, which is close to 10,000 plus euros, which is your money for you to use when you're in Germany. So you just have to show it. But if you can live within half of that, well, that's fine. So the rest is your savings. The good news is that you are not, uh, they are not looking for um, to see how much land your dad owns or how much jewelry your mom owns. And as, uh, is it possible, uh, Josh? 
to mute yourself. Thank you. As part of the comparative Ma'am, you're on mute. OK, is it better now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Super. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, as part of the part time workload, Madam, students... your, uh, sorry to disturb, but your presentation screen has become small. That screen, main screen. My screen has become small. Why? Yeah. I don't know. It's the same. Um, I'll stop sharing and I'll start again. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. All right. Is it better now? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, this is a very important thing for students and many students stop at asking, can I work there? Well, a smarter question to ask is if I work, can I can I be able to earn there? That's vital because in countries like Italy, you can work, but the companies are not supposed to pay you. So what's the point? Um, whereas for Germany, you can work for close to um, eight months in a year for 240 half working days or 120 per days and how much can you earn as students you can earn up to 15 euros an hour that's that's a substantial um, amount per hour and you can earn up to 11 plus lakh of rupees a year uh, which is tax-free income and as students you don't worry about taxes but well if you get to save all your money just for yourself without paying any taxes well it's a wonderful thing indians are respected in germany and not just at the student level but also at institutional level where uh, first i was the non uh, german so without blonde hair or uh, blue eyes to be the head of dad which was a unique position worldwide and now we have another indian uh, who's at the global president of DAD. We have um, another Indian who is also heading a very, very, very large uh, German conglomerate, Chisholm Group. You would see Chisholm Group elevators in your buildings and factories and so on. And very recently, we had another Indian who is now in the political arena. So if you have talents, you're absolutely respected. And uh, there are a couple of offshoots after finishing your um, studies in Germany. You can study in Germany and you can work in Germany. You can study in Germany, you can work in Europe. You can study in Germany and you can come back to India to join your family business. Or you can study in Germany and have your own startup. Lot of possibilities. So we have looked at all of these advantages. But being a very honest person, I would like to tell you that now it's getting even more challenging to be there because um, it's not just uh, Germans or Europeans who are being there, but a lot of Native Americans, you know, when you have to pay a very large student loan, it's a lot of uh, money that you have to pay back. And even if you start working, that loan still remains for a large chunk of your life. And that puts you back in your life. So a lot of native Canadians, Americans, Australians choose to go to Germany because of its um, almost free to affordable programs. And not just, not just that, a lot of Indians from smaller towns are also going there, from large cities are also going there, but also a lot of Chinese. Being an economic student, you would know that Evergrande, Evergrande in China has defaulted to a very large tune. And that may have a lot of repercussions. So Chinese are also looking to get into other greener pastures, um, there's a big, a large influx also of China, Chinese students right now and, and students from all parts of the world. So it's getting more and more challenging and competitive. And that is why um, we come into picture and we have an entire set of experts who work for each and every student in a very detailed manner to ensure your success. The way we work is we've divided the work into eight phases. The first is the research questionnaire where 
your academic goals or career goals are asked. And based on those inputs, a backward engineering is done by bringing about the phase two, which is diligently matched university. So the right university with the right program highlights of that program. Uh, let's say some program might say, hey, uh, we had an internship program at the UN. That would be really wonderful. So things like that. So all the highlights of that program are given into an Excel sheet and giving you the freedom to shortlist the relevant programs because we are one such agency which do not take any commission from any foreign university to send students because it's unethical to do that. And then comes the very important factor of document preparation. More than ever, are these documents focused on uh, universities are really focusing that this has to be in the right order so what happens when a student sees ah this university needs cv and an lor and an lom and they would say acha mere paas ye sab documents hai chalo let me let me put it all together and send it out and then when you get a rejection you wonder hey why did i get a re rejection but now more than ever there are plagiarism checks um, at the university level and they absolutely understand when there is copy paste done from Google Baba or from your best friend's documents. So this document preparation has to be super customized for each and every program that you've shortlisted to apply for. We have an entire editorial team. This editorial team is at least a PhD and a postdoctorate from a German university in your field of specialization. Such experts are retained to work on your documents, to revamp your documents in a customized manner to exactly what you're applying. So not just structural changes, fundamental changes to your documents, but also aesthetic changes of makeover. And when such beautiful documents go to the university custom prepared, that is the success mantra of bringing in success and the aim that you should get at least more than one successful admission. That is how we do the pros and cons, which is good um, for the university and not. And then the compilation. So this doesn't mean the clerical compilation. Each and every university now works on a specific platform like UniAssist or Primus and such. And they'll start asking you questions like, hey, do you have a HZB? And you're wondering, scratching your head, what is what in the world is HZB? Or um, have you done this or that? So each and every aspect of that is ironed out by our experts. And when you when you get through the admission, you have to be married to one university for your visa. So we also help you crack through the visa interview. We help you with the mock visa and last but not the least, the intercultural training. So all in all, eight phases is what we focus on. This takes about six to eight months and over 800 to 1000 email per student. And that's that's a very exhaustive uh, work that we do for every student. And in a nutshell, we can say that we transform normal personalities into world class personalities. Disney today is a trillion dollar industry, so we take great pride um, in making you into a commanding position and we take great pride in the quality of our work. There's also a testimonial of a gentleman who studied in India along with his wife. Let's see what he has to say. Hello friends, Jesse Krishna. I'm at present in USA in Denver with uh, Nikita Devia Shah, uh, a group or a company I met her. And I'm very pleased to see that she is actually doing what I've been trying to do on a personal basis, but on the professional level. As you all know, I studied in Germany and I am whatever I am because of the chance I got to go to Germany. And it was in Germany that I realized that I was uh, Indian. While in India, I was looking at the West for all the solutions and was thinking the West is the best. But going to Germany opened my eyes to the value system of India, the opportunities, the culture, the language, the food, and how scientific it was. And I became an Indian while I was in Germany. But also, while in Germany, I was interested in what made me such a good student. When I was just an average student in India, I realized it was the education system which was uh, making you think what was learned by heart, which was making you do a hands-on approach, uh, which uh, sort of made me a good engineer. 
And as you all know, it's a, that has helped me to become a good entrepreneur, a good engineer, a good technocrat. You could come up with a lot of solutions. And also, not just I became an entrepreneur, but also a social entrepreneur. So whenever I get opportunity, I will tell people to go to Germany or even any other part of the world. Germany the best, I think Germany. Because Germany has two advantages. One, mm. education in Germany at that time was, and even now, to a large extent, is free. In Germany, uh, education uh, is more hands-on. So I was very glad when I again today I was sitting with uh, Nikita and heard about what she's doing. Uh, she will, of course, introduce herself. Huh? Uh, I was working for DAAD, a German exchange program, which would guide people <laughs> Somebody else also wants to share her views in the webinar, and you're welcome to do that, ma'am. Anyway, this was about um, a testimony who speaks about how he was a very average student in India, but giving the right kind of guidance, mentorship, and hands-on experience made him a world-class technocrat and a great businessman. This is another testimony of a gentleman who has done, um, he's from Mumbai, uh, you know, first at Mumbai University gold medalist, and has done his PhD in US and postdoctorate at one of the leading institutions in Germany. And he attributes his success to Germany. I'm going to skip the, um, um, the video and now take you straight to the web link where we are doing a lot of industry analysis in STEM series with Stalwarts. So this is the web link um, if somebody can just copy that and put it in the chat box for the benefit of all or you can capture that on your smartphones so you can listen to all of uh, this into your um, you know you can listen to all of these stem series videos and this channel is not meant to make money or anything of that kind uh, but for the benefit of students where you can understand how each field what are the opportunities, growth opportunities in that field, and how can you excel? So it's all focused for the student success. And um, of course, uh, I have loved my interaction with students in person uh, before COVID, and I have I enjoy my mentorship and my role at the board of various institutions, also doing MOU with us during um, you know, during the pandemic, uh, you might know this gentleman who's a very renowned face, uh, Amrish Bhai Patel, and he holds a special regard for me. So I've not just visited, um, you know, the Narsi Monji or the SDKM, but also at Shilpur many, many times. Um, and um, if you know, uh, if you watch movies, so it's Mr. Maru from the Shimaru group, or if you drink tea, it's Piyush Bhai Desai from the Vak Bakri Chai or Mahesh Shetty of the Mahesh Tutorials. So they also engage our services for their employees' kin and kit. And for the work that I've been doing, I've been bestowed upon with a very prestigious leadership award. I'm also a social entrepreneur and I hail from a very small rural town in Kutch. And I have, uh, I feel really happy that I've been able to catalyze large amount of German funding to a very small village in Kutch for a medical NGO and also take the Consul General to our Kuldevi Temple. And as we come towards the end of the presentation, let me tell this to you about the job opportunities that students, after finishing their education, they can stay in Germany for up to 18 months to look out for a job. And it's not just Germany, you can stay in Europe throughout EU to look out for a job. And that's a very large tenure. So although you've not asked me about PR, but let me tell this to you, that if you are inclined for PR, this is also possible when you are in Germany and Europe. And um, 
you know, your student visa gets converted into a work permit visa, and then you can absolutely apply for PR. What are the kind of German companies that are hiring international students like you? So all companies from technology to car company. And what I've done is I've done a breakup of the company, the field that it hails from and how large it is. Why am I stressing on that? Because it's imperative to know that they are not hiring one student or two students, but student in hundreds. So whether it is SAP or T-Mobile or Audi or BMW, whether it's Nivea Cream or Bajaj Alliance, it's an insurance company based out of Pune or uh, Volkswagen or Deutsche Post, Norsoops. Every sector needs students like you with your kind of expertise. So please grab the opportunity to have international education at the fraction of the cost. I mean, even chocolates like British Board or um, Aral Fuels. Aral has a base in Ville Parle itself or Build, which is in the field of magazines and um, not just that, Elon Musk, who's now the richest man on the planet as of today, um, has built up a large facility in Berlin, and he's he is going to recruit so many um, so many international students. So you could have studied in Germany, and you can be working for America as well. So opportunities, endless opportunities, and let us capitalize what we learn that Germany is a very accessible and untapped avenue for higher education. It's not just for fields like engineering, but various options for arts, commerce, and pure science graduates. English is the medium of instruction, and there is opportunity to work with experts in breakthrough areas. There's free to affordable tuition fees and part-time job opportunities, which is very easily available, and you would be paid for that for the most part. Um, visa is hassle free and it can also be converted into uh, from student visa to a work permit and there are employment opportunities in the EU and the way ECS will help you is carve a niche for you through the myriad of possibilities it will help you select the best educational institution for you based on your academic background and academic qualification and also help you propel on a journey that's very satisfying and rewarding because you're not looking at just a job but a career and will help you guide you through the barriers of language and culture as a mentor i can tell you that i can see more talent and ability within you then you see for yourself. And if you have more questions, of course, there's going to be the question answer session, but you can also reach out to us at queries at exponentconsultants.com. You can write into us and whenever you write, please make sure that you are sending us your academic resume and your list of questions. And all emails are answered in one working day, flat. So if you think you've written to us and not got a reply, check your spam folder. We have sent the reply from our end. And we would love to have a feedback. Um, so, of course, Professor uh, Dr. Satra is there and we are here to guide you. There is STEM series uh, stalwarts that you can look at our channel. You can uh, send us an email. So all channels of communication are open. I hope this presentation was useful. Um, should you have questions, you're welcome to shoot. Yeah. Over to you, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It was just a great session. I wish I could have given this opportunity in my younger days. The present <laughs> generation is lucky. Present generation is lucky to have you, you know, have an expert like this here. Uh, our 100 plus uh, participants who attended, even our faculty members from our colleges, like I can see, Chartered Accountant Asis Garg attended. We have Dr. Sunita Madal from attended. And I'm sure all the students benefited. Yeah, question to you. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. You can write in chat box and ask a question. Preferably when you ask a question, put the video on so speaker can see you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Dev. Uh, hello, ma'am. One at a time, yeah. Uh, ma'am, actually, I'm studying in second year of BSc, and my plan is to pursue MSc in chemistry. So, 
तो मैम एक्चुअली आई आई वाज गूगल आई आई वाज ट्राइंग टू गूगल फॉर द गवर्नमेंट प्रोग्राम बट इट वाज शोइंग लाइक फोर इयर्स ऑफ बैचलर्स इज रिक्वायर्ड विद एन इंटर्नशिप बिकॉज़ द क्रेडिट पॉइंट्स डजंट मैच सो हाउ दैट या uh dev that's a very good question that you've asked and uh, you know we are in today's world we are living where information is in abundance but the right information is always not there we live in a world where we you know a flood of information but the right and that's where we come into picture so if you tell to us that this is your academic resume and that you're going to graduate with probably 12 plus 3 and this is your credit points that you're going to uh, earn at the end of 3 15 years of education the so accord in accordance to that our research experts dive into the sea um, and find out the best pearls <laughs> programs that are relevant for you and there are a lot of things that you cannot see on just normal internet but we have access to and we can bring out those programs that are exact matching to you because if everything else we bring out and it's not relevant to you it's of no use to you but you need exact relevance so that is by face so that's why we do face by face so in face two we'll bring out all of that that's a excellent question very good yeah yeah are you see would you like to speak are you see uh yes ma'am good evening ma'am i wanted to ask uh, if uh, is there any work experience requirement to be apply for a master's degree in germany so whenever any student is asking um of course i would like to see you but please mention what you're studying and uh, you know so that i understand a little bit of your background before i can answer that i'm so sorry ma'am i can't switch on my camera right now All but right. Uh, i'm right. i'm in my third year of uh, bcom honors mhm mm so your question is and if we need a work experience to apply for an mba ayushi that yeah ayushi that's a fantastic question um uh, some years back Uh, you know uh, probably your parents uh, generation they all said that you should do some years of experience before you head on from bachelor's to masters but in the last few years things are changing trends companies who like to employ you want you a fresh so that they can train you into their own systems let's say you took some experience into a company which had probably no relevance or zero relevance to the company that that wants to hire you for your skills and talent they will have to unlearn you first out of that and then make you learn so that's a cost for the company to give you a good example uh, probably you know there are a lot of you drive or your parents or a lot of people who would be driving and you are doing a right hand drive right in india if you go to a western country you're doing a left hand drive so irrespective even if you've done driving all your life your natural reflex is right whereas in a western country your natural reflex has to be left so there's an unlearning that has to be done and that's cost for the company and the companies want students a fresh so that they can train you into their systems and their specialized systems um, so it's better to go a fresh there could be some universities that could ask for work ex but we will let you know all in that um phase 2 exactly what's asked or if you are not but that's a great question ayushi all right thank question. you thank you so much yeah yeah any other question Ma'am, hi Darshi. Excuse me, ma'am. So I am in my third year, pursuing my B.Sc. degree in chemistry, and I would like to ask some universities, like related to chemistry, like would you recommend and the portals, like master's portals, like uh, to uh, recommend the courses that are uh, provided by the universities. So could you recommend some portals or universities? So uh that's a nice question that she so uh, chemistry has such a vast field you'll be amazed to know that a very small subject like protein chemistry can be an entire masters program yes ma'am um, i have researched about it <laughs> yeah and then and, and lot of blended programs also in other fields but also in chemistry 
but I would say that it's, uh, you know, I'm more focused on your success. So it's very vital. Let's see, even if he gave you the name of portal, google.com. Yeah, but what are you going to search for the google.com, right? So it's, as I mentioned, in the field of information, it's imperative to have the right information as Dave was asking in the beginning. So if you give us your resume and, uh, you know, what you've done, there's a professional evaluation that's done. And once you've registered, we can actually provide all the relevant courses for you that best match. We would even ask you whether you're interested in internship or university partnership. So there are a lot of factors that go into selecting a program. It's not as straightforward as it looks like. But that's a great question, Darshi. Next question. Hi, Hello, good evening, ma'am. Uh, yeah, hi. Yes, Tamish. Yeah, I'm pursuing, uh, I'm in my first year, I'm pursuing biochemistry honors. So I was wondering how can I make my application strong for Germany? Like what would be the courses required or do I need to show internship every year or do I need to show work in social service and stuff like that? And also my mother is very keen on me to learn German. So I think I'll be starting my German language course uh, from January and they have levels. So uh, the guy there, he said that there is no use of doing level uh, D or C from here because when I go to Germany, then I'll have to do compulsory German classes there. So what do you suggest? What should I do? Like, how should I go about it? Uh, there, there was a lot of questions in one question, Tamish. I do not know what the guy told you what and things like that. This is all very ambiguous. However, let me simplify it. So first and foremost, when you're doing biochemistry, it's also interesting to know because as you've seen, the courses come in very wide variety and there are different blends um, of programs available. So based on the program that interests you, would be a, we would recommend a strategy in accordance to that. Just by randomly doing 10 internships or internship every year is not gaining any brownie point or just doing some social service. No, it has to be an exact tandem uh, with what program that you're vying for or the best five or the seven or 10 programs. And that is why students start a little early with us. Number one. Number two, in reference to German language, that's also very, see all this I'm saying because in, at German universities, they follow the system of decentralization. There is, and in India, what we have is centralization. So there's more or less one rule that governs most of the things. And let's say you got admission in IIM, okay, and then that's regarded the best or, or something similar. But in Germany, it's the exact opposite. So it needs a little bit of training of mind also to, to to think from the German perspective, because they have close to 22,000 programs. Which program would best suit for you based on that? What are they actually offering to you and what should they want? What are they expecting from you? So there has to be a blend and a strategy to address that, which also includes the language part of it. It's very uh, wrong to give a blanket statement like B to B level to yahan se karna hai niche, C level. I, I, I do not like to give such very strong blanket statements because they turn out to be wrong for the most part. Um, I like to focus on the finer details because that's where your success will be. And only when the details are given um, will you be able to be more successful. You see, when I was at DAR, we were only asked to give two uh, two line information to every student, not even such detailed information. But today, uh, even after giving such detailed information and so much takeaways, there are it's it's still an overview and there is still so much work that entails. Eight months of solid work. There are experts that work for you and over 800 to 1000 email interaction. This because career is not like a shirt or a kurti that I don't like it and I change it, right? It's It stays with you for the next 20, 30 years of your life or more. So it needs right guidance step by step. So um, I think it's, you know, rather than having very blanket answers, it's good to go into finer. So please write to us and you have the details to do that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Talking to you really gave me a very clear picture of how to go about things. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words, Tamish. 
Your Hi, next Vedant. question, Vedant. Morning, ma'am. Ma'am, I have one question. Like my brother is has done a BTEC from mechanical, and he uh, after doing a graduation, he thought for trying a UPSC. So he done a graduation in like three, four, three or four years back. So is there any chance to pursue like to take a, a thought of any course to do in a Germany or like any other countries so we can apply for for that? Yeah, which field is your brother from, Vedan? Uh, mechanical. Yes. Yes, so that field has, so it does not have like an age bar. Um, uh, we've had students who've done uh, masters um, and then they join with us because they, they don't want their career to grow like this, but to grow like this, you know. So um, most at most of the uh, times, uh, these courses do not have an age bar. So yes, that's possible. And mechanical has a lot of um, wide variation of courses to study from and a blend of fields so from mechanical what exactly he's interested to study if we understand that we will be able to guide him better so the, and but, that's a very interesting field but, you know, but he does not have any like job experience or something because he like uh, uh, devoted to like study only for the upsc and he does not apply for any job in the middle of three four years so is that possible that he gets selected in a like good colleges or for something like we can work on his case for the most part yes but we need to look into his academic resume oh, okay sure man thank you thank you vedant any other question we can have last one or two question only not more yeah any other question all right if that, there are no question, a lot of questions Students are interested. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Dev, you want to ask something? Dev? Yeah, Dev, you want to ask anything? Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me. Uh, sir, how we can contact them? Because if we want to proceed for the, uh, for the asking. Okay. Yeah, she will answer. Madam, I couldn't hear his question so clearly. How to contact yeah, yeah. queries? Uh, queries, Likloa. Queries, Q U E R I E S. Queries at the rate exponentconsultants.com. E X P O N E N T. C O N S U L T A N T S consultants.com. Ye is email pe agar aap apna academic resume bhejiye aur agar aap apne prashn bhejiye to aapko uh, we will do a professional evaluation and we will take it from there. Okay. Thank you. Shukriya Dev. All right. If no question. Then uh, on behalf of Nathimanji College, Mithibai College, all the students, science, commerce, arts, and the teachers and the faculties who have attended, we really thank, express our sincere thank to Nikita Dedia, who at uh, for us, you know, like a convenient time, but for her it's a little bit odd time that she is here and ever ready to guide the student. And she rightly mentioned that as many as 22,000 different program across the German university to select the right program which suits your interest, talent and career. We really need a professional advice. See when uh, my daughter and uh, my daughter is in USA, my son is in Canada, we have spent big money. OK, now here in Germany, the education is nearly free, but provided you have a right uh, expertise guidance. And here where the question of a professional advisor comes into picture who are expert in their respective field and feel free to contact them. And I strongly advise to take their services, paying a smaller fees here in India ultimately becomes a full-fledged investment point of our lifetime career. So this is my absolutely strong personal advice to all of you. And Nikita Madam is always available. Her 
uh, website also you can just google you don't have to worry you just type nikita dedia german study the rest will come on own you don't need any mobile number email everything will come you can always contact will be always available and ready to render the best services to the students community to transform their life thank you very much madam thank you very much thank you very much professor dr vijay satra you are you are absolutely doing a phenomenal job of bringing informed choices to all these students across all streams and uh, you are a catalyst for their success so a big round of applause for you too it's it's all right, really thank you very much all right uh, i stop my recording here